All right, does this look familiar? It should, because this was last week's piece. But this week we're going to be working on just the top hutch portion. So same thing as I showed you last time to get it taken off. I just pop these little plugs out, super easy peasy, and take the screws out. And then I'm just breaking down every other aspect of this that I don't want. So we're going to be using this as a little standalone cabinet. These are really, really good sellers for me. Like every time I do one, they sell within the same day or within uh, two days. So this one is actually, I listed it this morning and it is being picked up this afternoon. So it's good stuff. These things always sell really quickly. Uh, again, that was just kind of like crown molding type situation on top there. So that just unscrews. And then I'm taking off this backboard because this is the part that I know what I'm doing with. I know that I'm going to be taking, I have some really nice leafy oh, wrapping paper and I'm going to be placing that over this back board here. This looks like uh, just that really old wall paneling. So it's, it's got to go. Um, the easiest way to do that because it has the lines and grooves in it, I don't like painting over those. It doesn't look nice. So I'm going to be decoupaging. And you guys know, there's my, there's my paper. This is literally a roll of wrapping paper. It is nothing special. Um, I try and make sure that it's not too shiny if I'm choosing a wrapping paper because sometimes they can be a little glossy. I don't like that look, but... If you do, you do you. So I'm just cutting this to size and then I'm going to match up with the patterns. So I'm going to show you guys this trick, which ended I ended up not needing to use it at all because I'm going to cut down this board. I just wasn't sure where I was going with this yet. So to begin with, I was just lining up the pattern, getting it all cut out, lined up. And since I couldn't get the patterns to match up exactly right, I just decided to cut it to the size that I need but then on the back of this board they had pencil lines of where they had the shelves lined up so that whoever was assembling it when they went to put it together they could staple through the backboard into the shelf without it showing through. Well, I'm going to use that line to put my next the line of the next row of paper if that makes any sense that way you won't see that the pattern doesn't exactly line up. So that's all I'm showing you there is you look for the pencil line or if there isn't one, make your own. That way, if it's over that line where the shelf is, you no one will see that the patterns don't line up exactly right. But then I'm just slathering on a bunch of my satin poly, uh, not being too perfect with this because it's just a backdrop. Um, wrapping paper does tend to get a little bit bubbly at first and just know that it's going to be bubbly and kind of wonky. Do your best to smooth it out. I do use a brayer for this because it's just a little bit more finicky to work with. Um, and you're going to have poly squeeze out the bottom. That's perfectly normal and just fine. And that's, it just kind of is what it is. But once it dries, it'll shrink back up and smooth out quite a bit. Then I'm going to be removing everything off this piece. So um, all my hinges, hardware, all that stuff. The hinges I know you, I mentioned in the last video, but I did um, label these ones as well. And here's where I decided to, I was kind of figuring out what I was gonna do with the bottom. So I'm cutting off this section of the bottom that I don't need and it's just getting cut off flush with the kind of bottom part of the cabinet. And then I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut that off. So what I'm doing here is lining up where my blade is going to hit on the line exactly where I want it. And then I take my straight edge there, line it up with the guide on the jigsaw, and then I'm going to clamp that down so that when I go to run my jigsaw along the piece, it I just butt it up next to the straight edge and I will get a really, really straight line. You can also freehand this if you're uh, super skilled. I, I am not. I can stay on the line fairly decently, but when I'm doing a perfectly straight line, it just this makes me feel better. So 
So now that that's done, I save all of my spindles from every other project and I have tons of spindles that are not from any projects just because I wanted them and liked them. So I have these two from an old bed and I'm literally just measuring out the width of them on the front skirt so that I can mark out where I need to cut a chunk out of the front skirt and then I'm measuring the same on the side. So I'm going to use my pull saw, cut off the measurements so that the legs kind of fit in perfectly. I'm not one for like precise measuring with a ruler. If I can use the actual item, I'm going to use that because I feel like I'm going to be more accurate using the actual thing and marking it with a pencil than I am to transfer numbers from one thing to another, potentially slip. All, it just makes me nervous. So I like using the actual item rather than measuring everything out when I can. And you guys, if you don't have a pull saw, you need one. They're incredible. You could do this whole thing with a jigsaw and it would be faster. Um, or really, you could do a chop saw too for the skirt. You could have taken that off and done that that way. Um, the pull saw is surprisingly fast and very clean once you get used to it. So now I'm putting the skirt back on so that I can make sure that I have a good fit of the feet. The feet I was actually cutting down into two. And this would have been actually, cause it's so thick, a good thing to use with a chop saw. However, there's metal pieces inside it and I didn't want to run the risk of potentially hitting one of those. So I used my pull saw to cut these in two as well. And so I just made sure that they were cut exactly down the middle. I did actually measure this part and then um, cut those in half and then fit them into the slots to make sure that they were a nice tight fit. So when you're doing a pull saw, you do several strokes backwards. Uh, it, it's called a pull saw because it cuts on the pull. So you do several strokes backwards and then I'll get your groove. And once you get your groove started, you can actually go through really quick and you have a surprisingly straight cut. It's just miraculous. So I'm just attaching these with glue and pocket holes. This is a really easy, easy way to attach things and it is incredibly strong. So for these, I'm using the Tight Bond 2. I don't need um, anything super, super crazy in dry time or strength because they also will have the screws there and this glue is awesome. So these get about four pocket holes each. I have them connecting at the top around the skirt and then I also am adding some of the pocket holes to the legs themselves and drilling them and putting the screws down into the base of the cabinet. So these things are not coming off. Now every one of these cabinets is different. I've done several of them. I've done different kinds of legs. I've done just all the things. Everyone is different and they all come out awesome. You just kind of play around with what you have and whatever you think is going to look best for this, the specific one you're working on. So now those are all attached super snugly. I'm sticking this right side up and I just make sure that there are no wobbles in it. And here I'm showing you that obviously now since I cut down the cabinet, I didn't need that full sheet. So I just cut that down too. I also did that with a jigsaw running it along a straight edge. This kind of fits right into the back very snugly. I didn't have to trim off any of the wrapping paper because it was already flush with the back. And then I'm just taking my airstrike and putting little tiny brad nails into it. And I did follow the guides of the pencil lines that were on there before so that it matched up with the shelf. So that was 
kind of awesome that those were there, that I didn't have to do any, any guesswork. Now I'm taking the glass panes out of these cabinet doors just so that I can clean and paint them. All I did was remove the bottom portions and then left the top ones on and then I could slide the glass out. And obviously I put those in a safe place. Then for the top, I obviously had to create a top for this since I took off the molding. The molding didn't make any sense because it was gonna be so low to the ground now. So I just went and bought a six inch poplar board. I wanna say it was about seven feet tall, but it doesn't matter. You just do whatever measurements you want. I knew if I got a six inch board, I would only need to cut it in half and join it together. So this is my new favorite glue for doing tops. It is like the ultimate extreme in putting things together. It's Gorilla Glue's, it's their strongest wood glue that they have. It has a great dry time, it's thick and it is strong and waterproof. So all the things that you want to go on the top of something. So I'm just running these along. I'm making sure that there's glue on every single part of it and then I just clamp this board together and I leave it overnight. Um, I didn't show it, but this thing has a lot of clamps on it and a board running across so that I can make sure that it doesn't want to bow forward or backwards. I'm using wax paper along the glue lines so that it doesn't stick to anything that I don't want it to stick to. And here's the part I missed filming on the feet. On the feet, I had to fill with wood filler just to fill in the little crack of putting them in. So this is just me sanding off the wood filler to get a smooth surface for my paint. Okay, I'm making a custom green and I literally am just playing around with this until it's something that I like. So I start with my emerald green and then I throw in some goblin gray. I know that I want it to be more olive tones, so I'm going to add in a bit of Woodland Harbor to kind of bring it back that way. And then I'm just toning it with other shades that I know will get me closer to where I need to be. This is just playing around with stuff. If you have a green you already like, just use that one. It will be faster and you will already have it on hand. Um, I've mixed this color before, so uh, it's one of my one of my favorite greens. A little bit of blackboard to deepen it up. You have to be careful deepening things with black because it wants to turn things a bit gray. So I added just a smidge of the yellow to bring it back to green. And then I'm starting this upside down because there's ridges in this and everything. And I want to make sure that I get all of those without missing them. And if you start your piece upside down when it has a lot of uh, intricate designs, it's just easier that way. So I've got my little detail brush. I'm hitting all those spots because I'm going to leave the very bottom of the legs wood because they match the shelves. And then I'm going in with my brush and finishing it out. This is going to be a very, very smooth paint finish. So I'm making sure that everything is wet. I get it on there. I've got my spray bottle if I need it. I get quite a bit of paint on there and then once I have it all on then I can smooth it out with really really long smooth straight strokes. And this paint's self-leveling so it'll be really really smooth by the time it's finished. You don't want to overwork this. Now while that paint's drying we're going to finish up the top because it has glued for its overnight time. And I'm just taking my router and just doing a round over bit. This is a bearing bit, which is really, really nice. So it rides a bearing along the bottom and it's very easy to use so that you can't over router the edge, which is nice. So this is just a very simple finish, but it's a simple cabinet. So that's the route we're going. See what I did there? Okay, so this is poplar. You need to use a pre-stain conditioner with this stuff. Um, I, I picked this piece out specifically because I really enjoyed the grain of it, but I know that it's going to take a little wonky. So pre-stain conditioner, and then I'm going to take a dark walnut and stain it with that. This won't be quite as red as the rest of the piece is, but we're going to fix that later. And with my stain, I just get it on, essentially like the paint. I get it on and then I'll smooth it out and then wipe back the excess after it's penetrated. So 
So now I'm taking emerald green wax and I'm sealing this entire piece with the green wax. Not the entire piece. I'm sealing the entire painted portions of the piece with green wax. And it's going to richen up the color. Now I have the base lined up with the top where I want it to be and then I gently lay it over. I'm adding in my wood glue. Again, I'm using the super strength Gorilla Wood Glue for this part because it is going to be the top. I'm applying this. I will flip it back up, redo my measurements to make sure that it's still in the exact same spot. And then I'm actually going to take my um, pocket hole bit from Craig and I'm actually going to use that at about three different points that way I can have recessed screws from the top into the top. So from the top of the cabinet and the underside, I will have recessed screws into the top that we made. And so with that glue and with the screws, that top is not coming off. I can actually pick up the entire piece by the top. And then we're going to reattach the doors. Oh, the hinges and hardware, I painted everything gold because, you know, gold and green. It's a magic, magic combination. Okay, so remember how I said the top wasn't quite red enough? I am taking, this is called red dirt wax. Uh, I believe I listed in the description, it's terracotta. But this one was a different one. Anyways, it just gives the wood the red tint that you need. And then I'm taking a little bit of my spray paint that I used on the hinges and touching up the screws that were obviously added in later. And I'm buffing out the wax and we've got a beautiful, beautiful finished piece. Oh, hi, Taryn here. Isn't she cute? So, so lovely. Um, this is super easy to do. I went through all the steps with you. I just keeping all the things that you have from previous projects really, really helps. So, if I can do it, you can do it. Voila. Uh, real quick, thank you so much to all my new subscribers and all your lovely comments and everything else. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, here's some photos. Oh, that's so silly. 